Hello, truckers, drivers, and adventurers. I am the Killer Trucker, and today is the day that I'm going to be doing the test, the written and road test. Uh, a little nervous, <laughs> but this is where I test out of the training program and get my own truck. So, wish me luck. Okay, well. I passed the written. Uh, there was only three questions that I missed. One of them was a, uh, a silly mistake. <clears throat> Basically the written test, some of it is based on CDL, uh, but other stuff is based on hours of service. Uh, there is one thing in regards to trip planning. Uh, and one thing to remember when you, when it asks how long is it going to take to do a delivery this is where I made my little mistake don't forget to figure in your rest time so like I figured oh it was gonna take me you know this many hours to deliver it which was like 19 hours but I didn't account for the 10 hour rest period so don't forget that uh, there is also, let me go over this way, there's some stuff in regards to the macros, relatively easy, um, it was basically, uh, there was a, not fill in the blank, but like the answers were on the bottom, it was matching, uh, so that wasn't too bad, and there was stuff that was in this test that really wasn't covered with my mentor, but there was, it was a lot of just common sense uh, type of things. Uh, don't forget, uh, when it comes to the Jake brake, you can't use it on icy roads, you can't use it on wet roads. Um, and then uh, also, there was something in regards to bobtailing. Well, if you know you can't use it on icy roads and wet roads, and then there's one that says bobtail and one that says all of the above, you know it's gotta be all of the above because two of the answers are right, so the third one's got to be right, too. And it makes sense. Why would you use the Jake brake on a bobtail? Because you're not carrying a tractor or a trailer. You don't need it. Where is the Jake brake cafe? <laughs> I thought it was over here somewhere. What'd they do? Close it? Um, but it was like, uh, 57 questions and 15 of those questions were, uh, the matching. Oh, I think this is it right here. So yeah, it really wasn't that bad uh, uh, at all. And so really the only thing I've got now is the road test. All right. So that was interesting. <laughs> There was this uh, thing, there was this water that was infused with watermelon. I'm like, whoa, this looks pretty good. Because I'm trying to wean myself off of all the freaking soda that I drank the past week or so. Um, yeah, just because I, I needed the, the boost because of all the, the driving and lack of sleep. Um, and I was going to get that water inf infused with watermelon. And <laughs> go to scan it don't know what it is I don't recognize it <laughs> it wouldn't scan I'm, uh, item not found I'm like oh well this is great so I wound up getting myself a Gatorade <sighs> all right well I am headed back to building 11 building 11 <laughs> that's where the driver the dqs and the dls that's where they're all at so i'll be uh they're basically pairing me up with a different mentor uh to do the road test is what it is and from what i understand it's just driving like i was before i think there's a coupling and uncoupling i don't have my work gloves that sucks <laughs> And then backing in between two trailers, so let's do this. 
So I am home. I didn't pass the road test because the person that tested me I did not like this person. And it wasn't because she failed me. I just I I did not like this person. I she's probably just as bad as that first mentor that I had. But she failed me because she said I was taking my turns too wide. I was doing the turns as I was taught um, at the academy. Make use of the space that you have so that way you don't go over the curb. No, according to her, I should be hugging the curb as closely as possible. If I try to do that, I'm going to wind up going over the curb. I had problems hitting the curbs when I was out with my mentor. So I started, you know, adjusting and trying to make more wider turns so that way I wouldn't hit the curb. But apparently these people at Swift don't even know what, what they want. I mean, it's all inconsistent. You got some that test uh, tire pressure by hitting it with a hammer or kicking the tire because that's supposed to tell you that it has exactly 100 pounds or 110 or whatever it's supposed to be, um, even though we're told to use a tire gauge. And then one guy tells me you can do either. I mean, really? <laughs> this is Swift we're talking about, I guess. Um, they could have told me to bring work gloves, but they didn't. And here I am climbing underneath the the vehicle, doing a pretest, which I did that crap for the CDL. Then this thing has got loaded with grease. So grease is all over my hands. It got on my shirt. I mean, it's like I tried to wash it off the best that I could. Thank goodness this is a crappy shirt that I didn't care about and not one of my good ones. And then it was some four-year-old Freightliner that I drove, which was a horrible piece of junk. It shook, it rattled. Um, when you try to drive it, it just, it, it, uh, lurches forward and back and yeah I'm just frustrated I mean you... when I did the turns in the academy you know the way they taught me and then I did it on the CDO test it was absolutely fine but because of this one lady who says now your turns are too wide a car could go around you they were not that wide. They were not that wide. They were wide enough so I could miss the curb. They were not wide enough for a car to go around. So, what does this mean? Well, everything else in the road test was fine. They're not going to require me to go back out with a mentor yet. I have to go, I have to drive all the way back to the Phoenix Terminal on Monday by 6 a.m to meet with some other mentor, trainer, tester, someone, and basically go out on the road. I don't think I have to redo everything again, but, uh, yeah, I mean, past couple of weeks, I've had to deal with driving with tandems at the 40 foot mark all the way back. Some curves I had to take wider than others. Every right, right turn is different. I'm trying to keep things consistent in regards to my turns because if I don't, I'm going to wind up running over curves. So I'm trying to stay consistent with myself and making use of the space that I've got to make sure that I clear that curb. Um but also being mindful of making sure that no one's past me. I just, I don't know. I, I've kind of upset. Um, this is the fourth recording 
that I've done um, after taking that road test. Uh, the first one didn't record, which is probably a good thing. Um, the second and third ones, I was pretty upset. Um, I've, I've had a, a chance to at least calm down for a little bit, but uh, part of me has felt like just giving up and quitting, which I can't do because of that contract. I was already anxious when I was getting there because I don't want to have to go back out with another mentor doing teams, bouncing around in a cab, not getting hardly any sleep. It was really, it, it was getting to be too much. And if I have to go back out again for another week or two weeks doing that crap, yeah, so... I told you folks that I was going to keep this honest and truthful um, with you, very candid, and um, this is this is what it is. Um, at the same same time, I'm trying to be tactful on what it is I say and how I say it. And the other three takes that I did, um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to use those, but I still want to keep things honest and, and candid with you. So that's where we're at. Uh, and, you know, like I said, this stuff, you know, it's show material. I guess uh, uh, this is a possibility that you may have to face. Um, I had... Uh, bumped across another person that I knew in the academy was in like a class after mine. He said, oh, the road test was fine. Don't sweat it. I was out there for 15 minutes. The guy was cool, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and I was out there for about an hour. Uh, one, because of traffic, but oh, this lady, this lady, I did not like her. But, yeah, I just got, I just, I guess I just got the wrong person. Just kind of like that first mentor that I got. That was the wrong mentor that I got there, too. You know, maybe everything on Monday will be fine. Maybe it won't. I'll be out again. I'm just, uh, not in good spirits at the moment. But, yeah, um. I don't want to sugarcoat things for you. Um, yeah, I'm not being sponsored or or anything like that by Swift. Um, I'm just giving you uh, an honest experience of, or, you know, of me going through the program and stuff. So that way, you, you can get an idea of what to expect if you decide to go through it. Because uh, quite frankly, I couldn't find uh, any videos out there of anyone else uh, that was going through it. You know, it was pretty much, oh, I went through training and uh, I quit. Or I went through one year and I'm glad I'm gone. Or, you know, there there was no actual uh, series of episodes out there of people documenting their experiences as they went through it. Um, and that was something that I wanted to do uh, for you folks. To do something that I couldn't find anyone else doing uh, with Swift um, or uh, other companies, because you know, like I said, I was going to go with a different company to start with. But uh, yeah, so uh, I hope you appreciate my honesty and my my candidness or can candid candidness is that a word? I don't know uh, <laughs> about the whole thing. So, anyways, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And hope you'll subscribe. Leave some comments, too, um, about stuff. Uh, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a killer awesome trucking day.